Hello everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is Ship Updates. Now, probably for the next week, maybe week and a half, things are going to be... We're going to be probably end up going incognito for about a week and a half. Um, the reason being is that I am moving um, not too long a distance away, not too short a distance away, uh, a medium distance away from where I am now. I'm basically, I've been, the last week, week and a half has been kind of a flurry of activity, so I've been a little bit irregular and off schedule on some of my videos just because I've been hired for a new job and it requires me to move and it's a job that I'm not entirely 100% sure that I'm qualified for, but someone very adamantly wants me in their organization so this is basically a thing and so i've i'm you know you've probably gone through similar you know transitions in your life certainly i did a couple of years ago when i moved out here but um yeah so getting to the new place which i'm not even sure that i've got yet as of the recording of this video which is one of the things that i've been constantly dealing with i've basically been sitting in front of my computer and waiting for emails and phone calls to bounce around and you know it's it's been interesting it's been an, an interesting week and a half uh let's just say it like that so maybe next week and probably into the week after that there aren't going to be videos because and to be perfectly honest normally i would pre-record videos and just kind of put them out there but i just haven't had the opportunity i just haven't really had you know the time but I did want to kind of, with ship updates, I did kind of want to address one thing because there's always this, this, um, this assumption that whenever the, you know, the big sale comes up that I'm going to change my mind about my big ship. Now, for those of you that don't know, or maybe just recently started watching the channel, the biggest ship that I have combat wise is the Nautilus. Now at different times, this has been different ships. It originally was a hammerhead, then it was the Polaris, and then it kind of came down to the Nautilus. And the Nautilus was not an immediate choice. The Nautilus was kind of, after the initial Nautilus sale, I picked it up, and I believe in the anniversary sale immediately after that. And basically I kind of looked at the Nautilus and I said you know there's there's a few things there that I like and I, I kind of want to see how this plays out you know I want to see how they answer the Q&A and I was still kind of on the fence because the uh, Polaris looked really really good to me in, in a lot of ways and I have to be clear about that but oddly enough you know there, there, <laughs> there are some viewers occasionally who who track me down on various discords and you know they will ask me questions or send me messages or, or whatnot and one particular adamant viewer who is always kind of obsessed with you know which large combat ship that i own and am i changing it and in their opinion i was going to you know i was immediately going to change to the perseus when the perseus came out and you know, once again, we've gone through yet another, you know, of our biannual anniversary <laughs> sales. And no, nope, the Nautilus is still there. Um, I, I remain a steadfast proponent of the Nautilus. And I want to I want to emphasize the fact that this is not a case of this is a like a universally a good ship. Like this is a ship for everyone. Now, this is a great ship. Um, it is a great ship, but it's not for everyone because it is somewhat, you know, it it does carve its own lane out. It has a very specific combat capability in the fact that it is a mine layer. Now, some people might say, well, like, how the hell do you use a mine layer as, um, you know, offensively? And for me as a pirate, I always figured, you know, the best way to use this is, you know, once you've kind of gotten used to how Star Citizen flows, how players, you know, move from one area to another, how players, you know, run cargo or whatnot from one destination to another, a really insidious trick to pull would be to, whether that path is through quantum or whether that path is through, you know, just 
flying, having to fly from one area to another. Let's say you have to fly through a certain area of an asteroid field to get to a really good mining spot or just outside of a mining spot. You got to fly your ore now back to the station nearby or something like that or just fly to an area where you can quantum out. There are going to be certain, you know, geographical bottlenecks in certain areas. And I figure being able to lay a minefield in that, those areas or to trap someone in a minefield, like pull them out of quantum or prevent them from going to quantum, um, that would be kind of a useful way to kind of hold someone in a spot with a very immediate threat and basically just say like, hey, but if you happen to drop a cargo container, maybe you could just fly out of this minefield, you know, not all your cargo, just a cargo container or, you know, using it to uh, like another way that I thought of it was using it to lure NPCs that, you know, while we, you know, we have built up NPCs, you know, and being able to fulfill certain tasks, NPCs and as much as players, and it just, it, it drives me nuts when they say this, but when, when, as much as players say, you know, the AI for NPCs, and there is no AI, it's simulated intelligence. It's not artificial intelligence. You know, stop with that. But, you know, as much as players um, like to believe that AI is very sophisticated, as you know from playing so many video games over so many years, once you figure out what that, you know, what that, a <laughs> what those NPCs are thinking or how they're making their decisions, it becomes fairly easy to kind of mess with those decisions and to exploit, you know, that decision making process. So even if I was to take a more peaceful, you know, you know, I'm going to leave players alone, but I'm going to go after NPCs as a pirate type of role. Like even if I was to kind of go down that route, um, it would be a fairly easy thing to kind of create a minefield attack, you know, an NPC, a larger NPC ship and lure them back into that minefield. And you might say, well, how would you attack them? And this is actually, you know, it's funny because the, like the, as the assumption, as I said before, was that I was going to get a Perseus. But the make or break point for the Perseus was the fact that the Perseus's turrets are bespoke. You know, they're specific to, you know, a special kind of ballistic ammo. And in the fact that you can't change them. So those those two size seven, uh, seven guns on the front and those two size seven guns on the belly facing rearward. But you can, you know, you can turn them around. Um, those are, you know, that's this one gun and nothing else. Whereas the size seven guns on the Nautilus are changeable. So there were like tactical reasons, you know theoretical tactical reasons for picking the Nautilus over the Perseus, but the real breaking point was in fact those big fat guns on the front of the Nautilus. Those big old size seven guns. Those, the fact that those are not bespoke, that I can change those guns out, that, you know, that really changed the arithmetic because now I could choose whatever guns I wanted and I could build a ship around those guns. So let's say, you know, I wanted to use a very particular, you know, gun for a very particular effect. I could, you know, I could build a ship around that. Oh, these guns are really hot. Well, and I can build into cooling or whatnot. I, it's not like going into a fight with a Perseus, people know what you have and they can kind of build around that. And they can say, oh, like if this person has a Perseus, then they must have these guns whereas with a nautilus it's an unknown just as a general rule i feel that, like that i like to have options and so being able to pack at least two guns the same size as the perseus and being able to change them to whatever guns are available you know within that kind of you know that field of weapons in size seven the guns that you can choose from for different effects or different you know damage profiles being able to change that around was very very um that was a big that was a big selling point for this ship for me so the you know like 
there are there are other selling points. There's one thing that you know, to my um, to my dismay, CIG has never fixed on the website, and you have to go to the Nautilus Q and A to actually find out the truth. Um, when the Nautilus first came out, CIG made a bit of a blunder on the stats page. Then they they said they were going to fix it in the Q and A, but then they really never did. Um, when you read the stats on the sale on the sale page for the RSI Nautilus, CIG made a mistake and they listed it as having one large quantum fuel tank when the brochure listed it as having two. In the Q&A they clarified that yes, it is going to have two large quantum fuel tanks and that that was a typo that they were going to correct but which they never did. And so you know, this is this is kind of one of those things where it's just like, you know, those stats have to be kept accurate and unfortunately as we know cig kind of you know with the stats page you really have to dig sometimes because there's stuff there that really shouldn't be there and it it it, it makes it, it makes me a little bit mad sometimes because you know, because of these like whoopsies, there's misleading information out there. And quantum fuel tanks is a big deal um, to me, especially because as I've you know talked to, at length about, you know, ships and range and being able to go where you want to go. And certainly we've talked about that so much recently. Um, it's very important to me that, you know, especially with a big ship um, that you have the reach to go where you want to go or more or less you know especially the reach that would allow you with two large quantum fuel tanks to take a larger or a faster rather um quantum drive and stay you know one step ahead of old johnny law so that's kind of you know those were kind of like the big things i mean the upward visible cockpit is is another thing because if you've ever flown the hammerhead and you you're in a landing bay on a planet and you're about to take off and then you go like okay are the doors open you look up and all you see is the ceiling with all these little amenities like hanging off or controls hanging off around you know your pilot and you're just like okay can someone go in the top turret and tell me if the if the bay is open you know that sort of stuff but realistically um you know, as I said in the beginning, I don't think that really the Nautilus is the correct solution for every pirate or every pilot out there. And when it comes to capital ships um, or, you know, ships of, of, of a certain size, uh, <laughs> um, it, it becomes a very personal choice. Because we are talking about your special ships. We are talking about your Saturday raid ships. We're talking about, you know, oftentimes, whether you look at the Polaris, whether you look at the Hammerhead, these ships cut very defined lines for themselves in terms of what they can do. And I mean, certainly, if you were to go head to head firepower between a Nautilus and a Hammerhead, you would say like, well, the, the Hammerhead's just going to beat you by sheer weight of numbers, all those size fours. It's just going to just it's going to blitz you, right? It's just going to rip your shields down. And that is entirely true. A Polaris is totally going to wreck you with torpedoes. Even if you can kill one or two, you don't have that many defensive turrets on a Nautilus to, you know, kind of defend yourself reasonably, I would say, against a Polaris's incoming torpedoes. Even something like the Perseus would probably would probably beat the Nautilus in a straight up fight with torpedoes and turrets. And like, w like when I'm looking at all these things, you might say, well, then why would you own that ship? And the thing of it is, is because I'm not for me, for where I'm at, I'm not using, I'm not planning on using the Nautilus to directly engage any one of these ships, unless it is to lure that ship into a fairly sizable minefield and then say give me your cargo and i'll let you go or you know i'll just push the button and detonate the mines or you know even luring someone just into colliding with a whole bunch of mines because they decide to chase me and then you know they're like 
ooh, there's that guy from YouTube. I'm going to kill him. Ha ha ha. And then they chase me into a minefield, not realizing, you know, that I had previously laid a minefield there. And, and that's one of the things in the Q&A for the Nautilus. They were like, well, these mines last for days. And I went, oh, interesting. So technically I could put a minefield somewhere and then come back with a different ship and lure somebody into a minefield. And that for me, you know, when we kind of joke about the Chris Roberts thing of like, I put a coffee mug on a planet and then a week later, someone goes to that same spot and the coffee mug is still there. That and the fact that you could lay a mine and it would last for days. And I was just like, oh, I could use that. Oh, I could definitely use that. You know, you know as much as we meme on the coffee mug, it, 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 did, it does actually serve a very important purpose for me. And I, I do have to acknowledge that. And so th these were the things that I was thinking of is, you know, it's not really a great ship, I would say, for direct warfare, but for indirect warfare, it's probably one of the best. And that's kind of the lane that I plan to be driving in, right? So that's kind of why the Nautilus, realistically. Um, and it, yes, it still survives to this day. It, you know, once again, another anniversary sale is come and gone or is about to go. And I still own the Nautilus still. It's kind of crazy to think about, but it, it weirdly appeals to me and and in appearance i actually really dig it when you see it as like in this landed picture when you see it you know most of the pictures you have those those basically those mine launchers extended outwards but you know when you see it with them retracted when you're not laying mines it's actually got a fairly sleek profile it also has VTOL engines which means getting on and off of a planet is going to be a lot easier than other capital ships do I think that it's going to be the fastest capital ship out there no but I definitely think that for how I intend to use it and for the player that I know that I tend to be in most video games like you know it, whether i'm playing wow i'm playing a rogue and i'm being sneaky and i'm being tricky and you know i've told some stories around that in some videos and in a lot of games you know one of the big selling points for me is kind of like stealth you know that's kind of one of the reasons why even though i'm not a big fan of single player games i generally find myself a bit of a sucker for assassin's creed even though i i almost never finish them I, I just love playing around in the worlds and just like the sneaking up and all that. And so this was a very, this was a very sneaky ship. And I, I, that really resonated with me as well. So yes, the Nautilus continues to survive. watching so, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen squadron 42's development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon